right, welcome to Code Corner. In this episode, we're covering 2020 NEC 706.1 scope. In a previous episode, we went into 690.1 scope, and now we're going to go into 706.1 scope. And we will go ahead and jump right, jump right into the text of that code section. 706.1 scope, this article applies to all energy storage systems having a capacity of greater than one kilowatt hour that may be standalone or interactive with other electric power production sources. These systems are primarily intended to store and provide energy during normal operating conditions. Okay, so um, one thing to note right off the bat is they're trying to delineate energy storage systems from say a UPS, which sits idle most of the time, a, a smaller, completely separate little enclosure that's going to maybe back up your servers um, or you know electronics in your home as a UPS. Um, totally different. I mean, even, even though it's comprised of really some similar components, um, they are a different category. So that's why they added in this other additional language. These systems are normally going to be providing energy um, intended to store and provide energy during normal operating conditions, okay? So that's why that language exists there. And let's jump in. Um, we actually jump right into the standalone PV diagram because it's kind of interesting to think about this. Um, we didn't cover standalone PV systems in our previous code corner on scope, but here they actually call it out in under the scope. And so we wanna go over it briefly. Um, really, this is the type of system we would install in an off-grid type setting which is historically where PV systems began to be deployed, primarily due to the fact it was the setting in the early days where PV systems were actually cost competitive, as opposed to extending the utility line miles and miles out to your remote location. So um, this was the most common type of system. This type of system is covered under Article 706.1 scope. Um, there's nothing really new here, but let's look over the basics. We've got our energy storage system, uh, or we still have a PV array, of course. It's producing DC power. Um, and in this case, we're showing a DC coupled standalone system um, going through a PV system disconnect. So that's where the PV system ends at that PV system disconnect. And that's where the code requirements basically end for uh, Article 690 on our system. Article 706 picks up from there, okay? And it covers everything over here. Our energy storage devices would be the, you know, they're gonna be batteries, um, but whether they're lithium ion or lead acid, still covered under 706, okay? Um, we're gonna have an energy storage system disconnect. We're gonna have a charge controller to control that charge between the PV system and the batteries to make sure they get don't get overcharged. And we still want to utilize AC appliances, likely, in our standalone setting, um, in our standalone home, cabin, whatever. And so we need an inverter. And in this case, it's a standalone inverter. And it's just gonna take that DC power, be it from the PV array or the battery bank and feed our main service panel, okay? Um, oftentimes these type of systems have a backup charge, AC charging source like a generator. And so that's also in our diagram here. And that's going to you know, be coupled not on the DC side, but on the AC side, but we don't really get into that here in this section. This code section doesn't cover um, generators. There's a whole separate section that covers generators. So what's covered in Article 706? We're not diving into that in this code corner. We're just talking about the scope. Um, but in upcoming code corners, we will be discussing such things as your, say your inverter uh, input and output circuits and the overcurrent protection re required for those circuits. We're gonna be going over disconnects, the energy storage system disconnects, and uh, charge control requirements, for example. And there's several other requirements from 706 as well, but those are some of the, some of the key ones. Now, um, we can move on to a different type of system, an AC coupled multi-mode system, which is also under the purview of Article 706, um, just like the standalone one was, and it's going to cover your energy storage system, such as like its listing, um, your energy storage system disconnect, requirements for the multi-mode inverter input and output circuits, and an inter interactive system disconnect actually um, is partially under the purview of Article 706. It's also under 705, but we're going to talk about that in a separate code corner. And um, even this output circuit 
comes into play um, for our backed up loads panel under 706. The DC coupled system as well. Um, same requirements, it's just a different configuration for this system type, okay? And so we're going to overlay in all these diagrams where the code applies because with each different type of system, our, our equipment's laid out slightly differently and connected possibly in different locations. Um, and so we want to make sure that for every case, you know where to apply the code and which conductors to apply it on, um, which disconnects to apply it on, and which pieces of equipment are really under the scope of Article 706. And in this case, once again, it's our energy storage system, energy storage disconnect, charge control, multi-mode inverter input and output circuits, interact interactive system disconnect, and even like a the output circuit for our backed up loads panel. There's some rules there in 706 covering that. So there's going to be, um, in addition to those general types of code requirements under 706 that I mentioned, there's other ones that you might not even realize are in there, such as ESS working space requirements and a directory that's required. Um, there's even ventilation requirements if you have a type of chemistry that outgasses during its normal operation. And so um, there are there's lots of 706 code requirements to be covered. Um, we're not going to dive into those in this section because we want to put out a lot of these code corners and, and really get into the details of the language, um, the intent, at least the intent as far as we have uh, researched and, and understand it, and how to apply that to specific systems. So that's all I'm going to say about that. As always, please contact us if you have other code corner topics you'd like to see discussed. If you have an energy storage project or even just a PV project, we do have design services. We develop, build, and, and submit full plan sets uh, for permitting. And we also have um, several other business lines, uh, such as our education business line and our technical services business line. So please contact us to engage more with Mayfield Renewables. We're happy that you watch this code corner. Mm -hmm.